Hi there everyone, and welcome back to the lab. This video is the second in a two-part series testing 3 and 3.5 inch props. In the first video, we looked at open prop designs, so props designed to be run without ducts. And I'll put a link to that video down in the video description. In this second part of the video series, we're going to be looking at props designed for Cinewoops. So these are bullnose props designed to be run in ducts. We're going to be looking at the power, the efficiency, and the performance of 10 different 3 and 3.5 inch Cinewoop props. And we're going to be finding the best one for your particular build. We're going to be looking at the effect of ducts on the performance of these props. And the results are pretty startling. And then finally, we are going to be comparing the best Cinewoop props against the best open prop designs to answer the question, well, should you even bother running a Cinewoop prop at all? Or would you be better off running one of the best open props that we found in the first video? It's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. I'm going to be using my thrust stand for all this prop testing. And if you want to learn more about the test setup and the test methodology, there's loads of information in the first part of this video. The test setup for running without a duct was exactly the same as for the open prop testing. However, for the ducted testing, I added this plastic duct around the prop. And because I'm not able to take an optical RPM measurement with this duct in place, I also fitted an electrical RPM sensor. So when we're looking at the ducted results, this is the test setup that we're going to be using. And for the open prop testing, it's the same as in the previous video. Before we dive into the test data, I'd like to take a moment to thank all my Patreons without which none of this would be possible. If you value independent testing of FPV components and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, you can join them in supporting all the work that I do testing motors, props, ESCs, and other FPV components and producing these videos and other educational content for the community. I sure would appreciate it and there are links down in the video description. All right, let's dive into the data now and start by looking at the thrust that these props produce versus motor RPM. Now this is a good measure of how powerful a prop is and how capable it will be to lift a heavier load. What we can see is that we have a big range in performance. We've got something like um, a factor of three, maybe even four between the most powerful and least powerful prop in the test. And we can also see that in general, the lines don't cross over each other that much. The less powerful props are less powerful across the whole RPM range. That said, I have seen something that I don't think I've ever seen before, which is we do have two props that do cross over each other. We can see that the Dow prop T3528 and the HQ 76mm by 8 cross over at about 30,000 RPM, and I've highlighted this in the plot. It's really interesting to see that the 3528 produces more thrust at lower RPMs and the 76mm by 8 more thrust at higher RPMs. It's not a big effect, but it is interesting to see that at least it's possible to have those lines cross over. When we're looking at the power of a prop, it's best to rank all the props at a particular RPM. And in this case, we're going to choose 25,000. If we compare the thrust that these props produce at 25,000 RPM, we can see some general rules. And that is that larger props and props with more blades tend to produce more thrust. We can also see that the HQ 89mm by 8 is a huge outlier. It produces 75% more thrust than the second place prop. And so if you're using that prop or you're planning to use it, you're going to need a much larger, much more powerful motor than what you would typically use for any other 3.5 inch prop. And that's something to, to be very aware of. Also, the hard and fast rule of more blades equals more thrust. Also, although it's generally true, if we look at something like the T-Motor T76S and we compare that to the HQ 76mm by 6, the HQ has twice as many blades, but it produces pretty much the same thrust. So it's although it's a general rule that you can use, it's not always the case that more blades guarantees more thrust. One of the real uses of a chart like this is selecting the right kind of motor to pair with each of these props. In general, a more powerful prop is going to pair better with a larger motor with a slightly lower KV so that you don't run the risk of overstressing and overheating a smaller motor by pairing it with a prop that's too powerful. But we're not just interested in the power of the prop, we're also interested in its efficiency. So let's look at efficiency next. The next chart we're going to look at is the thrust that the prop produces versus the amount of mechanical power provided to it by the motor. 
And a prop that can produce more thrust for the same amount of mechanical power is more efficient. So that means the curves that are higher up on this chart show props that are more efficient. In general, we can see a rule here, which is that the larger diameter props are more efficient than the smaller diameter props. And that's something that we see across the board for props of all different uh, designs, all different sizes. Larger props are always going to be more efficient than small props, all else being equal. There's also a general rule that props with more blades are less efficient than props with less blades. But this rule is not so hard and fast. And we can certainly see from this data that there are props with more blades, like the Gemfan 76mm by 5, that are among the most efficient 3-inch props, and much more efficient than the HQ Cinewoop 75mm, which is a 3-bladed prop. So for Cinewoop props at least, it's not always guaranteed that adding more blades is going to hurt your efficiency. And in some cases, it seems that the props with more blades are actually more efficient than some of the props with fewer blades. As you can see, the lines on this plot don't really cross over each other that much. And that means that we can pick a particular thrust level, say 500 grams of thrust, and look at the efficiency of all the props at that thrust level to compare them fairly. So that's what we're going to do now. Comparing the efficiency of all the props at 500 grams of thrust, we can see that the Dalprop T3528 is the most efficient prop that I tested. So that's going to be ideal if you're looking for the longest possible flight times on a three and a half inch prop. The super powerful 89 millimeter by eight prop from HQ is a lot less efficient than the other 3.5 inch props that I tested. And I guess we should expect that given how ridiculously powerful it is. Stepping down to the 3 inch size, we can see that the Gemfan 75mm by 3 and 76mm by 5 props are both really efficient for the 3 inch class. So if you've got a 3 inch Cinewoop and you're looking for the longest possible flight times, those are the props that I would probably consider first. The next property we're going to talk about is advance ratio. An advance ratio is the relationship between the axial flow velocity of air moving down through the prop and the propeller tip speed. A prop with a large advance ratio is going to be better for achieving high top speeds because it's going to continue to generate thrust even when flying fast forward without requiring excessively high motor RPMs. A prop with a lower advance ratio is going to be better for prop wash handling because for a given amount of thrust it's going to have a higher propeller tip speed and that means that the angle of attack of the blade is going to be less and that means that the risk of the blade stalling in reverse flow or adverse flow situations is significantly reduced. What we can see is that the HQ duct props, the 76mm by 8 and the 89mm by 8, have the largest advance ratio, and so they're going to be most suitable for fast forward flight, which I would say is not so relevant for Cinewoops, as Cinewoops aren't really designed for fast forward flight anyway. Looking at the props with the lower advance ratio, we can see we've got the Dalprop T3528 and the Gemfan 75mm by 3, and it's interesting to note that I found that advance ratio tends to be inversely correlated with efficiency. So props with a large advance ratio tend to be less efficient than props with a low advance ratio. So if you're looking for a prop that's just, you know, low speed cruising and hovering more than fast forward flight, then probably a prop with a lower advance ratio is going to be a better choice for you. Probably that Dow prop or the Gemfan 75mm by 3. The Gemfan 76mm by 5 is a particularly interesting case because it has quite a large advance ratio, but it's also quite an efficient prop. So if you're looking for something that's going to be suitable for fast cruising and still pretty efficient, then uh, in a 3 inch size, that could be a good choice for you as well. The final thing we're going to look at is vibration, which I think is a really critical parameter for Cinewoops. We want the video to be as smooth as possible. We need as little vibration as possible. I've taken the vibration at 200 grams of thrust, which is a sort of slow forward cruise for most of these uh, Cinewoops. And what we can see is that the props with the lowest vibration is the HQ T90 by 3, the HQ DT 2.9, the Avata prop, and again that Dow prop T3528. So if you're really focused on vibration, picking props from the lower category here is going to be better. If you're looking at props like the HQ 76mm by 8 or 76mm by 6, they're going to produce a bit more vibration um, compared to some of the other props and might not be best if you're focusing on smooth video at all costs. 
As I mentioned at the start of the video, I 3D printed a duct to put around the Cinewoop props to see how it would affect their performance. And it had a really striking effect on the test results. I wanna take you through the experiments that I did, what I learned, because I think it's really relevant for all of us who run pusher style quads with or without ducted props. As you can see from these charts, adding the duct massively reduced both the thrust and the efficiency of all the props that I tested. And the more powerful props fared the worst. They had the biggest reduction in overall thrust and efficiency. I was really surprised by this result and I investigated it in quite a bit more detail. Let's go over to the bench and I'll talk you through what's going on. Let's start by looking at the open prop case. So I've got a three inch prop set up in a pusher configuration, which is typical of Cinewoops. And a pusher configuration is really good because it has an unobstructed thrust column here. And that's gonna give you the best possible propulsive efficiency for the prop. But let's focus on where the prop is ingesting its air from. So you can see that it's not only ingesting air coming straight down onto the prop, but also it's gonna be ingesting air from the side over here that's gonna be sucked in and then pushed down by the prop. And we have this sort of bell shape for how the air is gonna be coming in and ingested over the prop. If I now put this prop inside a duct, we really change this situation quite a lot. So now we are effectively blocking all of the air that could be coming in from the side. So now all of the air has to come straight down through, uh, through the duct and over the prop. And by blocking all the air from the side over here, we actually make any obstruction above the prop much more significant because now we've, we've kind of restricted the area that the prop can draw air from and the area is now, you know, three inches diameter here. And if we have an obstruction that's blocking, you know, a portion of that area, it has such a bigger impact on the performance of the overall system than the same obstruction without the duct. You know, you could still have that obstruction, but now the prop is drawing air from further out, further to the side. And so a small obstruction has less of an effect. And that's what I was seeing on my thrust test stand. As you can see on my thrust test stand, I have quite a bit of obstruction upstream of the prop. And adding the duct in there really increased the impact of that obstruction on the performance of the whole system. And that brings us, I think, to a key learning from this test work, which is that if you do have a frame configuration where you've got some obstruction to the inflow of air to the prop, which is pretty common on Cinewoop frames where you have the props below the body of the quad somewhat, then in that situation, you're much better off running prop guards than a duct. And moving to a ducted design is likely to really significantly impact both the thrust and efficiency of the prop that you're running in that case. So if in doubt, it's probably best just to stick with guards rather than ducts. And if you do have a ducted design, you're gonna to want to make sure that you have as much open area for air to flow down into the prop as possible to make sure you get the best performance. So that brings us to the end of the video and just a couple of questions to answer really. Firstly, how do these Cinewoop props compare to the open prop designs that I've tested? Well, there are a few things that I noticed. The first is that the Cinewoop props in general tend to be a lot more powerful. They produce a lot more thrust at the same RPM and they require a lot more torque to drive them effectively because they're much heavier props both in terms of physical weight and also in terms of the aerodynamic drag that they have when they're spinning. In terms of efficiency, Cinewoop props are typically a little bit less efficient than open prop designs, and that's the trade-off that they're making to get that extra thrust. They're also significantly louder. All of the bullnose props that I tested are a lot noisier than the tapered edge uh, open prop designs. So if you're really concerned about noise, um, and you don't need all that extra thrust and power, moving to an, an open prop type uh, design for your Cinewoop with a tapered blade might help reduce the noise a little bit. Let's finish with the recommendations now. And we're gonna start with the 3.5 inch size. If you're running a GoPro, um, particularly a heavier GoPro like a Hero 10 or Hero 11, and you need a lot of thrust and power in your 3.5 inch Cinewoop to carry that camera, then there are a couple of props that I think stand out. There's the uh, Dalprop 3528 and the HQ T90 by three. Both of these props have plenty of thrust and power, excellent efficiency, good vibration performance, um, and they have a moderate advance ratio as well, which means they'll be reasonably resistant to prop wash, 
which is really important for a cinema week, particularly if you um, like to do shots where you're descending uh, rapidly. Often that can cause prop wash. Um, if you have a prop with a lower advance ratio, it typically does better in that situation. If you're not running a GoPro and you're concerned about noise, you might also consider the Gemfan Hurricane 3525. This is an open prop design. It produces quite a bit less thrust, which if you're not carrying a GoPro is not going to be a problem, uh, but it produces less noise and it's going to be even more resilient to prop wash as well and even perhaps a little bit smoother. So if you're just using like an O3A unit to do your recording rather than a GoPro, then this prop might be the one for you for a 3.5 inch cinema whoop. If we come down to the three inch size, I got a couple of recommendations. They're both from Gemfan. We've got the 75 millimeter by three and the 76 millimeter by five. And this is really just gonna be based on how much power you need. If you're using a three inch Cinewhoop to carry a heavier GoPro, again, like a Hero 10 or Hero 11, you're probably gonna want this um, 76 millimeter by five blade to give you the extra thrust to carry that weight. If you're carrying a lighter camera, maybe something like um, a Session or an Insta360 or one of the, the lighter cameras, maybe like a DJI Action camera, you could perhaps get away with the 75 millimeter by three, which is a slightly more efficient prop. Um, it's a little bit quieter in my testing and it's gonna be a little bit smoother as well than this 76 millimeter by five blade. If you're not running any sort of action camera at all and you're really concerned about noise, you could always run the HQ T 3x3x3. This is a really great all round open prop design for three inch. It doesn't produce as much thrust as the Cinewhoop props, which won't matter to you if you're not carrying a heavy camera. But it is going to be, I think, a little bit more resilient to prop wash. It's got a lower advance ratio and it's going to uh, be a lot lighter and therefore more responsive in terms of keeping the quad stable in the air. And overall, that should give you um, smoother footage if you're running a lighter weight three inch Cinewhoop type design. I hope you enjoyed this video and found these recommendations useful. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee if you can spare a couple of bucks to support my independent test work directly. And check out AOSRC.com for FPV products, recommendations, and the archive of all my test data on AOS Labs. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.